right hand closet uh, sim racer. This is attempt number two. I've had a go at this already. Um, so this is a uh, brief description of how to get RFX2 working in VR. Try and keep it as brief as possible, uh, just so you can get up and work. Okay. So, um, before you open up RFX2 in VR, there's a few things you need to do. Number one, make sure your wheels on. Always make sure your wheels, pedals, anything you use while racing, make sure it's on before you open the game. Uh, so yes, make sure you do that. Uh, number two, if you run VR, you probably do this anyway, but just to clarify, um, in your NVIDIA settings, uh, 3D settings, make sure you have maximum performance. Give it all the power it needs. Um, and then I also run pre render frames of two. Um, I find that just works better. Right. Make sure you got those done. Uh, next, you want to make sure you put into your search. Choose power plan. Make sure you're set to high performance. It will give you all the power you need again. So make sure those two are at full performance. Next up, um, this is a personal preference, but I like to keep things as simple as possible. The VR is very complicated. Um, I use Oculus Straight Talk. Um, now the reason I use that. Um, it overrides the Oculus version of it, the official version, um, but it's just better. Um, so what I would do, set up a profile, I have a couple here. Um, in R Factor 2, I run super sampling at 1.5. Um, this essentially gives you a higher resolution um, within the headset, and it's an absolute game changer if you've never used it any other um, VR game um, in iRacing, which I do through iRacing itself, I run mine at 2.0, so I double the resolution. Um, in R Factor, I can run it at 1.5 or by 3080, and I'd highly recommend at least increasing that to 1.2 um, and then trying to run with it at that um, because you'll, you'll just get a better experience. So that's what I do. Also make sure you have AWS off, which under circumstances, it'll restrict your um, frame rate to 45 frames a second. So make sure you've got that turned off. And then these profiles, once they're set up, once you launch the game, uh, you'll hear an audio, you can set it somewhere. Somewhere. It might just be general settings uh, enabled. Make sure that's enabled. There's an audio cue somewhere. I just can't remember where I found it now. I think it's just in general settings. Yeah, set to audio cue. And then it just confirms that it's loaded up in the profile. Uh, loads better. So, yeah, set one of those up. I even use that as you can see for two games, and I do the others inside of iRate. Um, so yeah, have that open. That's number one. Obviously, download is is a free tool. Um, can be done. And then the second thing I always have open is MSI Afterburner. Not necessarily for driving the clock in the graphics card. I use it for viewing what my graphics card's up to while I'm in VR. So I hope you've had it. Menus or it does 60. Anyway, um, in here you want to check that you're running 90 FPS as close to or as maximum of that a lot of the time, the better. Um, you don't want that dipping down to like 30, 40, 50. It's, it's not a good experience. You need to adjust settings. You need to maintain or be at 90 frames a second as much as you can. Um, and then obviously in here it'll show you where it is that you're struggling if you are struggling. So 
by CPU usage or GPU usage or RAM or video memory, whichever you want. So usually if you've got lots of cars, it's video memory. Lots of different makes of cars those. So I use this as a reference to go back to. Very handy. Shift that out of the way. And then fire up Steam. There we go. Right. Um, before you launch R Factor, um, don't open Steam VR. I'm just going to open it to show you what I have as my settings. I will shut it down again before I. Five, six, so Steam VR. Go into settings. Leave it on hundred. Put it on hundred. Leave it on hundred. Forget about it. I rarely do anything with this. Um, you can put the performance thing in if you want to, but I actually find the one in. Yeah, find the one in. Oculus Trait or better. So we go to performance. Um, it will give you like a timing thing. I think it's like 11.9 milliseconds. As long as that's under 11.9, generally you're at 90 frames a second. If it starts to go to sort of 20 or 30, then that's when you're really struggling. But you can put that on. You can see that in the headset. You'll see what I mean when you try it. Um, quite useful for seeing how your system's doing without having to lift the headset off and look around at other things. But yeah, I'll use that one. So as regards Steam to VR, leave your resolution 100%, leave it, forget about it. Um, I thought like I'd have got to close this down again for us to open it. Again, so I'll shut it down again. Right, I'll bring this into view. So, you should always do this before you launch R to do. So when you hit play, you get the configuration options. Always go to graphics configuration before you open the game every single time. Mine's actually changed, but yours will probably look like this on auto. So make sure you select graphics card. This will also, if you've never run it before, stop light. It'll have disabled in the VR. What you want is HMD plus mirror. So that is basically HMD is the headset, so it'll go in the headset, and the mirror it will show on the screen. The menus are loads easier on the screen than in the headset, so highly recommend that because it, I don't think it has too much difference on performance. I've never really noticed anything. Um, so yeah, make sure you select that to HMD plus mirror, and then your graphics card, and then you could test around with post effects or anti-aliasing depends on the system for reference i run a 5600x and a 3080 in the VR. do that close that now give you the option to start again i've got to move this off screen but now i'm basically just going to go to play our back to do launch it on my screen and the headset so we'll do that Obviously, make sure you've got your wheel on before you do this. You've got your softwares open. I've showed you my MSI Afterburner and the Oculus Tray tool. And also, you need to make sure you've opened up your, um, your, your VR software. So, Oculus Home or whatever it's called. So, I've got that open already. Play. Screen. Right, so. Okay, so we're in. Mm -hmm. Right, so things to do before do anything else if this is your first time in it without VR. Go to your hover controls. Right, sorry, assign controls. You want to sign a button to recenter your view within VR. 
absolute must before you do anything else. I would say into a sign controls on assist and gameplay. A couple of options across here. Second one in, and you've got down here three centre head position. I have the same button allocated to every VR game that I play, just so I know which one. So yeah, make sure you do that before you, you try to drive it. Um, as regards to graphic settings, I said I run a 3080. Um, so turn your virtual sync off, whatever it is. Uh, post effects I have low. And the aliasing I have to, to four times. Uh, you'll find if you change any of these settings here, we'll need to restart the game before going back into a session. Usually, if you try to load up, once you've changed those, it generally crashes, just an artifact to do thing. So if you change any of those, close it down, reopen it, and um, you'll be all right. Also, if you do go out to come back in, make sure you close Steam VR as well, because if you try to reload it, you'll get it. So always make sure Steam VR is actually closed prior to you loading up the game. Um, and then obviously you can see my my settings here. Um, generally run as much detail as possible with like the special effects either on low or off. I mean raindrops. So mine runs it okay on medium. Lower it if you need to. Um, and then the other one is visible vehicles. I run at ten. Uh, sometimes on the open map, you can. Um, you can have ones popping in, popping out sometimes, but generally tends for me. Uh, I think again, test it, see how your system copes with it. But yeah, generally, generally tends for me. Um, feel free to copy these or use these as a guide. Obviously, you're very minor over 3080, but anything lower, you might struggle. Texture detail would be a, be a, be a good one to lower down. Um, also, the super sampling, so if you try 1.5 like me, they didn't like it, drop it down to 1.4, 1.3, 1.2, test will work for you. Um, I will also leave a link in the description for, as a VR optimization, optimization guide on the VR Factor 2 forum, which is brilliant. Um, there are a couple of things that you must do. Um, headlights loading, you'll see it in the guide, do that in the, the player JSON files. Um, and also uh, pit detail. Those two things will save you loads of performance. So highly recommend check that out. Change it in your settings as a guide in there. It will show you to do. So yeah, do that. So once you've got that, just check. We are alive. You're better off doing it on the screen because you're that on it's sort of in your face. Over penny session. That was my last race on the low fuel motorsports. Love it. So yeah, you'll find start your race. Watch yourselves. I'm not going to recenter my um, my view in VR because I'll show you why. Just any session. So you remember, yes, it did turn for a while. Um, we're going to drive. Now, if you see here, I'll put my headset on my head. You see the car's actually below me. So this is why you need a, a button to recenter. So if I sit in my seat position, press the button that you assigned earlier, and we're in. There you go. And away you go. Also, uh, when you're loading into a session, usually if you're in that low fuel motorsport, I um, mean, one of their open lobbies, for example, don't put the headset on until it's completely loaded find you'll have loads of flickering and all sorts in the headset. It might trigger you, maybe you feel a bit ill. So 
leave the headset off, let it load everything in first, um, and then put the headset on. So yeah, that's my brief, hopefully brief, guide of how to get R Factor 2 in Oculus anyway, open, um, open in VR and ready to rock and roll. Um, if anyone's got any questions, I know there's a few things I've missed out, but I'll put the link to the, the automation guide in the description so you can see that and I recommend you checking that out. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, any questions, chuck it in the comments, I'll, I'll reply, help you out where I can. I'm on a few discords, so um, there, are, there are many more people knowledgeable than me. I'll say, brief guide. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you again another day. Thank you.